This is video number five um, of unit 2.1, the first unit in macroeconomics, uh, the overall level of economic activity. In the previous videos, I have um, explained the circular flow of income in a simple and closed economy, as well as in a, an open and complex economy. Um, I've also examined the output approach, income approach, and expender approach to measuring national income, talked about GDP and G&I. Uh, in this video, I will evaluate the use of national income statistics, so talk about their strengths and weaknesses, and I'll explain the meaning of green GDP. Let's get started. So, using national income statistics has many advantages. First of all, um, national income statistics are a useful indicator of standards of living, especially when we use real GDP per capita. Remember, real GDP per capita um, is um, GDP per capita adjusted for inflation, and GDP per capita is calculated by dividing, dividing GDP by the total population. Uh, national income statistics are also very useful for making comparisons over time. Uh, when you look at change in real GDP and whether or not there has been economic growth in the economy. It's also useful for making comparisons between countries. When we look at the real GDP per capita between countries, we can make comparisons in terms of sta standard of living. It also serves as a kind of report card about the performance of the economy. Uh, has the economy achieved economic growth? Uh, are the government policy objectives, are they working? Is the government achieving its policy objectives? Does the government need to make adjustments? So national income statistics are a sort of report card for the economy. However, remember, we are evaluating, so we're also looking at the disadvantages. There are some limitations of using national income statistics. First of all, they do not reflect the distribution of income and wealth. They measure the size of the pie, but not how much each person gets. So maybe the economy is growing and is achieving economic growth, but the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. That's not reflected in national income statistics. Um, national income statistics do not reflect differences in the cost of living. So comparing between countries is not um, necessarily accurate because uh, it doesn't show differences in the cost of living. If one country has a much lower real GDP per capita than another country, uh, but this country has a much lower cost of living, then it's not so bad. Um, it, uh, national income statistics do not reflect the extent of social welfare benefits and the variations between countries. Uh, just because a country has a lower real GDP per capita doesn't necessarily mean uh, that the quality of life there isn't so good because the government could be giving more social welfare benefits. Uh, national income statistics... Uh, Sometimes, because of fluctuating exchange rates, it's hard to make international comparisons of GDP over time, and they make them less accurate and less meaningful. National income statistics also do not reflect the composition of national output. So they reflect the size of the pie, but not what's making up the pie. What are the ingredients of the pie? So, for example, the United States has a very large spending on military technology when you compare it to Europe, which has a very large spending on welfare benefits. So there are obviously arguments of uh, which is better to be spending on or w w which is better as a source of national income. That's not reflected in national income statistics. But it doesn't stop there. There are more limitations or more disadvantages. National income statistics, they do not measure or account for the negative externalities generated in producing this national output. So if the economy is achieving economic growth and there is an increase in national output, but this comes at the expense of pollution, noise, and increase in stress levels, environmental destruction, that's not reflected in national income statistics. And this is why now the concept of green GDP is becoming very uh, common. It's nominal GDP minus the environmental costs of production. It's a measure of GDP that accounts for environmental destruction. It takes into consideration the effect on the environment. National income statistics, they don't account for the size of the informal economy, which is the unofficial production of goods and services. Things like DIY, do-it-yourself, growing your own food, sewing your own children's clothes. All of these are very big in developing countries. They're not accounted for in national income statistics. Lastly, national income statistics may be useful in measuring standard of living. 
but they're not a very useful indicator of quality of life. So it's a very materialistic measure, national income statistics measure, the materialistic standard of living. Um, a country that has higher GDP, real GDP per capita, doesn't necessarily mean its citizens are happier or have a higher quality of life. And this is where the difference between growth and development comes into play. So while national income statistics are useful, they have their limitations or their disadvantages. And you need to be aware of these limitations and be able to discuss these limitations and evaluate the use of national income statistics and also um, be aware of the concept of green GDP, which is a really sort of modern concept of accounting environmental destruction in your national income statistics. Thank you very much. Have a great one.